Good morning. Welcome to Take Me Out to the Ball Game. As we get rolling here on a Tuesday morning, August 3rd. All right, medal count. It's now tied up neck to neck. China and the USA are tied at 68 apiece. China has 10 more gold medals than the United States. The big news that everyone's paying attention to because of the antics that was pulled earlier, Simone Biles did compete in this uh, event. The the parallel bars or uneven bars, hell, I don't know. It came on uh, very early this morning, so I didn't watch it, but she got the bronze medal. And uh, so everyone's going to be happy about that. Uh, But I still wonder if there's going to be some dissension among their teammates because she did let them down in a big way. Okay. Uh, Looking at that, we've only got a few days left. It's not looking good for the U S they just are not going to catch China in gold. And now the overall medals are starting to to, uh, lose that grip. I do believe they're going to beat out Russia. They still have a commanding lead over Russia. They have a 17 medal uh, lead over Russia. Now they are going to get some medals with the basketball. The, the men, uh, they, they have went ahead and solidified themselves into the semifinals in the men's basketball. And of course there's still a ton of things left to, to be uh, meddled between now and essentially Saturday morning. Okay. Moving on from that, let's go ahead and hit hit a couple of strikes. We're going to do three strikes, and we're going to get out of here. All right, the first strike of the day, as we uh, kind of go around the world of sports here, the show's kind of evolving. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it to keep it the most entertaining and keep it short and succinct, but also try to hit all the major things that are going on in the world of sports. The NBA free agency hit yesterday, and some of the big moves – that were made by that were Lonzo Ball went to the Bulls. CP3 opted out and then opted back in with the four-year 120 deal. Lonzo Ball, by the way, was four years, 85 million. Uh, And then Kyle Lowry signed with the Heat three years, 90 million. And the Knicks get Eric Fournier. And they also re-signed Derrick Rose. So they're trying to beef up their backcourt. There are still some big names out there. Kawhi Leonard hasn't re-signed. He is expected to opt back in and sign an extension with the Clippers. Remember, he has a torn ACL, so he's not going to play this year. If he does, he's going to play very, very minimal. Um, I think best case scenario for him to come back from that ACL would be around playoff time next year. So. Whatever he's trying to sign, he's trying to lock himself into a deal. And you'll know how happy he is with the Clippers organization and where it's going when you see what the what the optics are. They know they're going to give him money to just hang around for this year. If I'm the Clippers, I want a longer term deal and I don't want a bunch of damn opt outs. But we'll see if they've got the brass to do it. They sign him to off like a four-year deal, and he's got to opt out after two. That tells you right now that the, the, the Clippers' ownership and management has no leverage, and they're just begging him to stay. If they sign him to a five-year deal and an opt-out after year four, then maybe we're then maybe we're talking about more of a of a better job by the by the Clippers organization. So if you're a Clippers fan. Do you see anything less than a three-year commitment? And I'm saying he he needs to give him a four-year commitment, but anything less than a full three-year commitment. Then, because when he comes back from the ACL, usually these guys aren't, aren't that great the first year they come back. So you have to take that into account. You don't want to just give free money away while he sits over there on the sidelines and you don't have some kind of a payback in dividends. So we'll see how that goes. Still, still a few guys 
to be signed out there. Uh, DeRozan and John Collins are both still free agents. Those are the big gets. I would expect they will, they will sign here either today or tomorrow. A lot of rumors, so we don't really have time to get into that. Miles Brennan, the quarterback for the LSU Tigers, he is having arm surgery. They won't say exactly what it is, but everyone believes it's a broken arm in his non-throwing shoulder. But what that does is that paves the way. He was supposed to be battling for the starting position, although most believe that Max Johnson was probably going to beat him out. But now Max Johnson is definitely the starter. Max Johnson, the son of ex-Florida State quarterback, basketball player, Brad Johnson. I see him now on TikTok. It's kind of funny. It's kind of weird seeing this guy on TikTok. Calls himself Big Brad, Big Bad Brad or whatever. I don't know. He, he's trying to do some kind of a line of his where he's, anyways, it's a, it's all uh, publicity stunt like most of that stuff is. Um, Minnesota Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer says that he believes about half of his players just flat out will not take the vaccine. No matter what he does, about half of them will not take the vaccine. And that is uh, that's a daunting statement. Half of his people will not take the vaccine. And you got to figure the Minnesota Viking locker room is probably pretty close to the rest of the NFL. I don't know why they would be any different. So if you're saying about it, and I, I think he's overestimating, I'd say, I think, I'd say it's more 60, 40, but you're seeing a lot of COVID outbreaks all throughout these camps. I think you'll continue to see them. And I think that's why the NFL said enough is enough. You either get the vax or it's going to cost your team paychecks. And it'll become real when the first one happens. It will become real. There's not a whole lot anyone can do about it. Can't force a player to, to get this vax, but that's what's going on in the world of sports today. And real quick in Major League Baseball, as, as we look around the, uh, the standings, didn't get a chance to do that yesterday. Really quick, we're going to fly around that, and then we'll get into uh, this date in history. Got a good one for you today. Uh, the National, uh, excuse me, American League East, Boston is now just a game out. Tampa gets crushed by Seattle. The Yankees lost to Baltimore with their new guy, Heaney, that they made the trade for, which was a head scratcher to begin with. And he comes out and gets bombed by the Orioles. So right now, the AL list looks like this. Tampa, Boston one back. Yankees seven back. Blue Jays eight back. White Sox are running it away with the Cleveland Indians. Houston has a four and a half game lead over Oakland. And then the Mets have a two and a half and three and a half game lead over Philadelphia and Atlanta, respectively. Milwaukee, seven and a half in front of Cincinnati, who, by the way, have been playing pretty good baseball, but so has Milwaukee. And the Giants, they're now three and a half up on the Dodgers. And the Dodgers have a three and a half game lead for the first wild card. They are in front of the Padres, who have a commanding lead for the last wild card. We'll get into the wild card tomorrow. Okay. This date in history. This was a crazy one. On this date in 1909. So we're talking about 112 years ago. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible, but this is a very good story. One that I sure, surely that most people have not heard. Tim Hurst, he, who's an umpire, on this date, 1909, he caused a riot in Philadelphia in the old Scheib Park. This is at the end of the ball game. This was, a, this was an excerpt from one of the Philadelphia newspapers. It was the bottom of the eighth when the White Sox were throwing the ball around in reckless fashion that, that Colin saw a chance to get to second and avail himself. Now, what they're talking about, the bases were loaded. Eddie Collins from the Black Sox, that Eddie Collins, but he was a young 23-year-old player, 
playing for the Philadelphia Athletics at the time. He's standing on first. The ball was hit into the outfield on a bases loaded situation. So they tried to throw it to the plate. Lot, from the way that I read this, there were a lot of relays going on, and Collins decides to take second base. He gets called out when the second baseman dropped the ball, but the umpire said that Collins knocked it loose. Everyone there in the stands said that they did not see it that way. Now, who the hell knows who, who's right and who's wrong? Didn't have instant replay, but they feel like Jake Atts, the the second baseman dropped the ball and Collins gets into it with the umpires. The umpire spat tobacco juice on him, tobacco juice. And a riot ensued. Long story short, Ban Johnson, who was the commissioner of the American League at the time, two days later would ban it's one of the reasons why his nickname was banned because he, he was known for, for, for hitting people with heavy, heavy, uh, suspensions. He would ban Tim Hurst, the umpire for life from the American league from umpiring, which if it went down the way he did, I, I understand it. The one caveat that I'll say is first of all, Eddie Collins, really cool story because Eddie Collins ends up being in the black Sox in that scandal where they get banned. You got Fred Baker who hit the ball. For people who don't know who he is, his name was Fred Home Run Baker. His nickname was Home Run Baker. Now, he only ever had not 11 home runs in his entire career. He only had 11 home runs in one season. But home runs were so rare back in the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, that he became nicknamed Home Run Baker. Okay? So you got those two guys involved in the play, but Hurst, he spat on a player and was – launched for life roberto alomar spits on an umpire and we put his ass in the hall of fame that's on this date in history and we'll see you tomorrow hopefully you y'all will enjoy these little things we're, we're going to start doing more of them uh planning on doing them every day on take me out to the ball game have a great day y'all uh we, we got a lot of good action in baseball it's a full slate of course the olympics is going on and we're two days closer to the very first preseason football game. Take me out to the ball.